Scanners, The Fly, Videodrome, Dead Ringers, Existence, Naked Lunch, A History of Violence. These are just a few classic films by David Cronenberg, an absolute master of sci-fi horror, and his audacious films have shocked audiences for decades. David Cronenberg was born in Toronto, Canada, but what you may not know about him is that his family is actually 100% Jewish. And what we're going to be doing is going back as many generations as we can on his Cronenberg line in order to see whether we can learn more about his family. I'm Yona Paley, and I believe genealogy is fun. It's time for some thrills, chills, and maybe even some body horror as we take a look at the family ancestry of David Cronenberg. He was born March 15, 1943, to Esther Sumberg, a ballet pianist, and Milton Cronenberg, a journalist and author. Milton was actually born in Baltimore, Maryland, and his family moved to Canada shortly after he was born. Here he is in the 1921 Canadian census. You can see him living with his family. This document, along with his 1934 marriage certificate, gives us a better sense of who his parents were. We can see that Milton's parents were Abby Cronenberg and Sadie Leibowitz, and with a name like Abby, it didn't take very long to find documents in Baltimore for the family. According to his World War I draft card, Abby was a tailor for the Dominion Cloak Company, but that's actually not all that he did. Through Google, I was able to find that he actually had some patents, including one for a folding couch. And whether or not he actually ended up ever making this couch or getting it made for him, I don't know, but it is very interesting to look through this and see all the details of the product. Clearly his grandson was not the first person in the family with some creativity. He shows up here on the 1900 US federal census living with his family, and according to some notes on the paper, we can see that he actually came to America in around 1878, which is extremely early for Ashkenazi Jewish families as most of them came to the U.S. between the 1880s and 1920s. And because of this, we're actually able to see the family also on the 1880 census, which is quite rare. Uh, most of the time, you'll only see them earliest on the 1900 census. And this is because, uh, as we've mentioned before, the 1890 census was destroyed in a fire. So anyone who came in the 1880s or 1890s, you're usually not going to find them until that 1900 US census. Abby shows up on different documents as Abby, Abraham Joseph, or just Joseph. And there's something a little bit strange going on with the naming patterns here, because as we can see, Abby's parents were named Abraham and Rebecca. And usually you wouldn't have a name that's the same name as your father. So I'm not entirely sure whether Abby's Jewish name was actually Abraham, as I haven't been able to find his gravestone. It could have been another name like Abba, uh, or another similar name that could have been written down as Abraham or Abe. Um, so I don't know for sure that this is that he has the same name as his father. However, I do think that there might be something going on with the names here that's a little bit odd, because according to Abraham's gravestone, which I was able to find, his Hebrew name is Abraham Yitzchak, son of Yitzchak Isaac. And once again, we have what looks to be a son who shares one of the names with his father. Uh, and in Ashkenazi naming traditions, this is very unusual. You usually would only have this uh, if the father died shortly before the son was born. But we know for sure this was not the case with Abi. So without further details, I don't know what's going on over here, but it is very interesting and definitely something to keep note of. I have not been able to find out for sure where the Cronenbergs came from. From all the articles online, it seems to mention they were from Lithuania, and indeed there does seem to be an Isaac Cronenberg listed on a Lithuanian census living in what's in the modern-day Suwalki, Poland. 
And Suwalki is actually a larger region and parts of this region are indeed in Lithuania. But without any further details, I'm not really sure if it's the same guy. The age could match up, but there simply isn't enough there to determine where the Cronenbergs came from or whether this Isaac is David Cronenberg's great-great-grandfather. But we do know his name, which is a start, and it's quite possible that the Cronenberg family may know more details than even I was able to find in the research. This would be a prime example where DNA could come really, really in handy. Since Cronenberg isn't a super common name, and perhaps if someone was able to find someone with that last name in that Suwalki region of Poland or Lithuania, that may be a good indication of a connected relative. So there you have it. For now, we're just going to have to be satisfied with watching the films of David Cronenberg rather than knowing exactly where his family came from. But we do know that his great-great-grandfather, who was probably born sometime at least in the 1830s or earlier, was named Isaac Yitzhak or Yitzhak Isaac Cronenberg. And that wraps up our episode. If you liked it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. As always, I'm looking forward to bringing you more videos about famous Jews, as well as tips and tricks that you can use in your own genealogy research. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll get you next time.